activist Lebo Dlamini's walk from Johannesburg to Pretoria has inspired another fees must fall protester. Bonging Korsi Kanile is staging a sleep out at the union buildings. He was found guilty and is awaiting sentencing on the 16th of October for his part in the hashtag fees must fall campaign. He says he'll stay at the union buildings until he gets the attention of the president. I understand he is now uh, giving a, a speech there from the lawns of the union buildings. Let's listen in. In last hours that I'm going with you. So if my mother agrees with me, then no one could ever disagree with me. Yes. So you came fighters there, and you came members of the society and others who come from other organizations to show support on what I decided when I was alone. And having done that, I want to appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. And everyone who is here speaking from my heart, I want to say it openly that I cherish what you have done. I honor what you have done. But most of all, I love you for what you have done to me. Please do it to others when there is a time to do it. The call is very simple. And we are seeing. I wonder whether these tourists are going to enter because they've closed Union Field again. What we've done, comrades, yesterday we spoke, we called the office of the president, spoke through the guy called Mutwa, and we confirmed with the guy that you are coming. And the guy said, upon our arrival, we must meet up with the administrator in his office of the president. But immediately, when we're arriving here, all gates are, gates are locked. When we speak with the security personnel, when we speak with the deployed police force here, they say there was an instruction from I don't know that we can't enter because they are briefed that we are coming in a protest form. But how do you protest when you are three comrades? Because we have said, it's my mother, Kazuzu and I who are coming here. And people who have found here, to us, they came as a surprise. But when we have arrived, the gates have been locked. The locking of the gates tells us the attitude of the presidential office. The locking of the gates tells us about the attitude of the sitting president upon the youth of South Africa. Yes. If you can lock a person who makes a call and say tomorrow I'll be carrying a memorandum. Tomorrow, I'll be coming with my mother. Tomorrow, I'll be coming with my brother in struggle. And tomorrow, in case the president does not meet me today, I'll be carrying a blanket because I'm prepared to sleep until the president comes and meets me. You lock a gate. What paranoia is that? Yeah. What paranoia is that? Who can go destroy union building or even wedge a coup and call first before he comes? <laughs> It means in that presidential office and in that president, there's some certain amount of madness that is not revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be scared. You can't be scared of a person coming with an old mother who was born in 1959. She can't even fight. I'm alone. I'm not even strong physically when you look at me, but I'm, I'm strong when we try to engage him. <laughs> and Gazuz, you lock the gate, you close everything. It shows the attitude of the president and the sitting presidential, presidential office in a collective form. And we say, comrades, having said that, we're holding a clear revolutionary spirit. And we want to call upon everyone to say, wherever you are, no matter how small you are, do some certain demonstration. Say to the president, he must pardon us. Yeah. Say to the president, what we have done, we have done it during the course of struggle. We want to put it on record that young people in South Africa are not primarily and fundamentally violent. We want to put it on record to say, if young people in South Africa were violent, young people would have today, because they are suffering from youth unemployment, they are suffering from diseases, they would have been the whole of South Africa because they are a majority in terms of numbers and they are fearless in terms of their hearts. Yeah. But because they are peaceful, they are still doing not anything 
besides protesting peacefully and laying their comments. Now we're saying, even us, whatever has happened during this mass fall, it happened because even police officers, they were very violent during the first mass fall. Even the institutions of higher learning were highly and fundamentally militarized. And once you deliver violence, of course, you are bound to be met with violence. So if any students across the country or anyone conducted violence on behalf of this mass fall, it was only a reaction. But young people in their nature in South Africa, they are not the violent individuals. And even today, I am a convicted person. And I believe that I'm a very innocent man. My mother I born again, my deceased father I passed. Where would I have learned violence? I'm not a violent person. All the cases that I'm laid with are cases because, you know, for carrying a slingshot, you are told it's a dangerous weapon. A slingshot, that one of pain, it's a dangerous weapon. Against armed police officers. What is most surprising, in that first mass fall strike which I was arrested, there is no even a single person who says I sustain any injury. There's no one, but you go and open 13 cases against me. It shows the kind of attitude of the state. We then call upon everyone, even if there is no media, even if you are alone, if your Facebook, Twitter, say that, Mr. President, you must pardon us. Yeah. Because Tosas normally say, Nam Shandim Om If we allow this government to mistreat young people, if we allow them to push young people one by one, they will come not only for me. Tomorrow it will be France. Tomorrow it will be Kazuz. Tomorrow they will repeat again to Amla. Tomorrow they will uh, uh, go for, uh, 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 for all other fighters or any comrades or even ordinary people because we are silent when we are being mistreated. So I'm saying today, comrades, we are sleeping here. If the, 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 the Mr. President does not come out, we are going to sleep here. And we are saying those ones who are not afraid of sleeping outside, can they please humbly join us? We'll sleep together. And I don't think that if we are 10 or 15 sleeping together, the night can, 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 be, too, can be that long. Just sleep together, we wake up, we see what happens. We also call upon everyone who can donate with food. Because when we came here, in fact, we, even, we have never even had breakfast as I speak. If we have food here, yeah, even amongst ourselves, let's share it together. Let's see how do we share what we have, because we are the have not. If we were the haves, we would have not been here. So we say, comrades, let's have a spirit of, 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 of sharing. But all in all, let's continue to soldier on, because we know that tomorrow is better than yesterday, because we know that we are better than we are yesterday. And I want to put it on record once again. For what we are doing, if you think it's madness, Mr. President, then it means you are mad, because we are going to sleep here. And we call upon everyone. If you see Mr. President, you know where he eats coffee, tell us secretly, we'll go sit outside that trophy cup and tell him, Mr. President, please pardon us. Yeah. We heard yesterday that he might not be here yesterday. Or it's not here even today, we don't know. But they say it's in Cape Town. Maybe we must think about going to Cape Town also and say, Mr. President, we're outside here. Pardon us, Mr. President. We must follow the president. If you know where he goes to toilet, tell us his toilet. Yeah. Then we go to the toilet. Yeah. Pardon us, Mr. President. Yes. Whatever he says, he must pardon us until he pardons us. And united we stand, but divided we fall. And we are going to get what we get by any means necessary. Tomorrow, we're going to sleep here if it doesn't come. Today, we're going to sleep here if it doesn't come. And this free education, regardless of the circumstances, we're going to full, get the full package of aid by force. Mm. We're going to ensure that in South Africa, we are liberated by force. Yeah. We're going to ensure that in South Africa, the youth get progress that is necessary according to their desires by force. Yeah. Hello, 
There you have it, Michelle. That was Bongi Nkosi Kanyile, who was addressing the um, number of EFF student command, um, you know, students that have gathered here at the union buildings, essentially telling the president that wherever he is, they will wait for him here. They've brought some of their mattresses. They have vowed to stay here until they basically hand over this petition that has uh, uh, quite a few signatures so far saying that they are also calling on other people across the country to stage whatever sort of pickets possible to really send a message to the president that uh, the students...